Have you ever wanted to build and deploy your very own podcast application for web, desktop, and mobile? Well, today I'm going to show you how with the open source.net podcast application, where you can spin up an entire backend and front end for your application in minutes. So let's check it out. Hey everyone, I'm James and I'm back today talking about the .NET podcast app. This is a sample application at .NET Conf 2021. I showed it off previously in some other videos. It's open source now. And what's really cool about it is that you can clone the repo, pull it down locally and start developing, or you can actually spin up Azure resources. And with a few little lines of configuration, you can basically create your own podcast application and have automatically continuous integration and delivery set up with GitHub Actions. It's super duper cool and it takes just a few minutes. So today I wanna walk you through how to build and deploy your very own podcast application. So first things first, you wanna head over to github.com slash Microsoft slash .net dash podcasts and you wanna browse the repo. It's completely open source uh, and you can ask questions, you can have issues, all those other things on there. And what's cool about it is that you can browse all the source code, but you can also see all the tech that it was built on. And you can even browse a live running version of the app. This is the ASP.NET Core front end. You can click sign in over here and actually browse all the different podcasts. Merge Conflict, that's a good one. That's our podcast. <laughs> you can check out all of them. Listen, this is all live. And what we're going to do is create our own version of this application all set up on our GitHub repo, and then we can start deploying it, which is super cool. So check this out. You have all this stuff here. Listen together, listen later. This is all going to work and really cool dark modes. Check it out. Boom. So let's go ahead and do it. Now down over here, like I said, you could pull down the source code and deploy it yourself locally and use Docker. We've shown that off uh, before, and I'll link to some other videos and, and notes on how to do that. Uh, but um, there's two guides, full deployment and then local development quick start. So this is if you want to run it locally, you want to clone the repo and pull it down. But let's do this full deployment with GitHub Actions. So what this is going to do is create our own fork, basically, of the .NET Podcast app. So Nish from my team, uh, who also worked on the application with Plain Concepts and a bunch of other amazing individuals, wrote this guide. Uh, so this is going to basically deploy to Azure, which is super nice, all of our backend stuff. So if you don't have an Azure subscription, you'll need a free one. You can set that up. There's also all sorts of things like student accounts, subscriber benefits if you're a Visual Studio subscriber. And if you're just learning about Azure, there's a Microsoft Learn course. So this is going to talk about here in the architecture what's going to be deployed. So basically, we run everything on Docker containers uh, in the container registry inside of this Kubernetes environment with Azure App Service Container Apps, uh, which is cool. You don't have to worry about that because it'll figure it all out for you. And it also has an app service plan for Listen Together and the website. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to follow this step-by-step -step guide on how to do this, which is super cool. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is actually fork the repo. So go to fork. I'm going to put it in my own over here, obviously, because it's me. And it's going to fork it. And we're going to be off to the races. So this just takes a few seconds, and it's going to start doing stuff. Cool. All right, so now what we need to do is go back to that guide, which is down here, full detail guidelines, and we're gonna start doing stuff basically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this tab out and I'm gonna put my Azure tab over here like this. And let's go ahead and put this down as well over here. That's looking mighty fine, perfect, cool. So first thing we need to do is actually uh, create a resource group for our podcast. Now, what you can do over here is you can actually just go into Cloud Shell. You can also install the Azure CLI, but you can tap on Cloud Shell here and that'll pop up Cloud Shell for you. Now, when you're going in, this is gonna create a, a Cloud Shell bash for you. It's gonna be logged in. It's gonna give you all this stuff. And you wanna do a few things. You're gonna create an Azure resource group. Now, we're putting this in West US too. You can put it wherever you want. Um, um, so that'll be the first thing you want to do. So I did that right here, and I did that ahead of time. You can see nothing is deployed inside of this resource group at all. Now, the other thing that you'll want to do besides creating the resource group is we're going to create our Azure credentials, uh, basically, over here. Now, what this command does, it creates a service principle. And what this is going to enable us to do is allow GitHub Actions to create and manage our resources in GitHub. So there's this long command. Let me actually open up a notepad over here. 
show you what it looks like. So it's going to create a service principle. We're going to give it our podcast name. This can be whatever you want. It's going to be a contributor. You're going to put in the subscription ID. That subscription ID is the same one that you created for the podcast group and then the resource group. So this would be your, in this instance, podcast RG for resource group. And that'll pretty much take care of everything for you automatically since you're already logged into the Azure portal. And what that's going to give you is this big JSON blob of stuff back, basically. Now, this is super important because it's tied you know, to this resource group, to your identity. You don't want to share that with people. So make sure that you don't share that with people in general. So we're going to get that set up. All right, next things next is we're going to add a bunch of GitHub secrets. And this is how this is made. It's all made with GitHub secrets. So I'm going to go into my settings. I'm going to go down into secrets. And all I got to do is say new repository secret. I give it a name and I give it information. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this Azure credentials, paste it here. Now what I'm going to do is I have my information from the Azure portal that I got. I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to gray that out so you don't see it and just hit add secret. Cool. All right. Now we're done. No, I'm just kidding. We're almost done. We're, get, we're getting there. There's a few other GitHub secrets that'll basically configure our GitHub actions. And there's a bunch of them here. So we're going to want to set them all up. So there is quite a lot here, but I'll talk you through them. So let's do the first one here. Let's create our Azure resource group. That's going to tell our GitHub action, you know, what it is. And again, that is this one here, podcast RG resource group. So we'll get that set up there. Hit add secret. All right, now we're going to create another one. This will be our podcast DB login. So we're going to create a login here. And this is going to be our username. So I'm just going to say James. That's a good username. Hit add secret. And we'll do another one here. Add a new repository secret. I'll say uh, secret here. And I'll just say James1234 exclamation point. I'm going to delete this before the video comes out so you won't be able to log in. Hit add secret. Now, those are just configuration configuration settings for the Azure SQL database, but there are more things that we'll need to create. So this ACR is Azure Container Registry. This needs to be unique, and this is actually going to create the Azure Container Registry and then deploy to it. So I'm going to copy the reference here, and then I'm just going to put in James123. That sounds good. Hit Add Secret. All right, next up, we have our storage name. So let's go ahead and add that. This is going to be our podcast storage. I'm going to go ahead and copy this control copy, put it in there name. There we go. And let's go ahead and put the storage in here and I'll do James one, two, three. That sounds pretty good. Add secret. Now we have a podcast database server name. Again, if it doesn't say it needs to be unique, it can be generic. So you can just use the default ones here. So let's do that and let's do podcast DB server. Cause that's for our own there. Let's now. Uh, create our Kubernetes environment. Again, this doesn't need to be unique. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste in the default here because this is my own. The only time they really need to be unique is when it's it's a URL that's public out on the internet. So we're at add secret there. Workspace name. This is for our log analytics. Again, this will be all created for us automatically. So let's go ahead and put the podcast logs in there. Uh, I'm just going to copy that. Boop. Add secret. Service plan name. This is going to create a service plan for us automatically, which is quite nice. Um, again, we're going to say podcast service plan, add secret. Let's add a SKU on here. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and add the SKU here. And we're going to use an S3 for it. You can change this later, whatever you want to do. Add secret. All right, a few more. Now we have our hub name. So let's do this here. Hub name. And this one also needs to be unique. This is our listen together hub. And I'll say James123. Perfect. And then our web app name over here, add new repository secret web app name. And again, this will be a URL that's exposed. James one, two, three. Perfect. We're totally good to go. So now we have all of these different secrets here. I can update them later if I want to all these different things. Now what's cool about this repo is that uh, if I pull this over is that there's all of these GitHub uh, workflows over here and you'll see that there's a a uh, code, a uh, QL for analysis, a podcast API, a hub, and a web. So if we look at the API, for example, there are a few different things, one that happens on push and one that happens on pull requests. So for the pull request, this will simply go off, double check it's a pull request, and then simply build our Docker you know, files. So it's going to build the source code, make sure it validates, and run it here. 
But if we are going to be pushing over here to main, whether push, if we merge a pull request, or if we manually kick off um, one, and as long as it's on main, it will go off. It's going to log in with Azure, deploy our images um, to ACR, log into ACR. It's going to build and deploy our podcast app, build our API, do our podcast in ingestion feed, and then it will actually also, when that's done, go off and deploy into our container apps all automatically for us and also deploys um, some images as well from this here. So if we go back over to our guide over here, let's go and pull that back up. The other thing that Nish talks about is to make sure you have all your things here, double check them. And of course, if for some reason something's not unique, then it's gonna fail deployment. But we're gonna go ahead and enable the GitHub workflows here. So let's go ahead and do that. Perfect, let's go back up here, click on GitHub Actions, check. I understand my workflows, go ahead and enable them, perfect. Now, what we wanna do is come over into our guide and make sure we read it, because I messed this up before. <laughs> so the first thing we wanna do is run the podcast API CI CD, and we can kick this off manually, but of course, when we do a, a, a commit to the main where it's in a specific folder, it will redeploy that. So here, for example, um, this will tell you if you wanna make a code change, you can do it, or you can kick it off manually. Then after that, we'll run the hub CI CD and the web CI CD. But you have to make sure that the podcast API is kicked off first so it creates all your resources. Now, of course, you could go ahead and do this all manually too. It's totally up to you. If you want to you know, um, create all the resources manually, you can do that too. All right, now all I need to do is simply start my workflow over here. So I'm gonna select the podcast API CI CD because that's the one we need to kick off first. Then I can say run workflow, run. Now I could have also modified any of the code inside of that specific um, you know, source code as well, which would kick it off manually. Um, but this, I can just kick it off without having to modify any code, which is kind of nice. So we can come in and see that this is going to build and push, and this is going to kind of create all the resources in Azure that we need. And then after that, it will deploy all of our services that are out there. Now the deploy may fail necessarily um, a few times if you know your resources aren't unique names or maybe your password isn't strong enough. I've done this before. Uh, and in fact, I'm re-recording this because that password I put of like James123 was not strong enough. So put a strong password in there with some symbols and some numbers and some capital letters. Uh, so uh, that will, you know, you'll get error messages if that doesn't go. Now, the first time you run this is gonna create those services. So it's gonna take a little bit of time. So let's go ahead and just play a little Nintendo Switch while we wait. All right, cool. We are deployed. Let's head over to our Azure portal. And yep, sure enough, there's a bunch of stuff inside of my Azure portal. So inside of here, we have the database. Uh, we have an Azure container apps or a container registry, container app for our API, our database, a bunch of things inside of here. So this is cool. If I actually tap on the API, this should give me a podcast URL. And sure enough, I get my swagger back right here. And I've just deployed my entire backend API. So I tap on categories, I can hit the try it out, hit execute, and sure enough, I get back all of my different categories right there, which is really, really cool. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to go back to our actions and kick off the other application backends. Um, so we need to run the hub and the web. So let's run that and hit run. And we can run these in parallel. This is fine because all of our um, different backend Azure services are all up and running. So I can go back into this one, hit run. And now what this will do is it will go off and fire off our web and our hub. So if we go back over here and I go back to my resource group, we can also see that I have not only the SQL database, the SQL server, my container app registry, my logs, my container app updater, and even my storage container over here, which is really cool. One thing to double check too is make sure that your blobs are public access available here. If they're for some reason private, double check that out in a redeploy, just so you can click on this, hit change access. You wanna make sure that it's anonymous. And what's inside of here specifically is a bunch of covers. So just different images for the podcast that have been optimized. So instead of pulling from the RSS feed, they're all there. All right, cool. So the next thing that we'll wanna see is uh, eventually some web apps too and different backend services. 
So let's go ahead now and let's let these go and do their thing. And again, these are going to go ahead and build and then deploy the different backend services. And these are independent services. So these should go ahead and spin it all up. This will also build up our ASP.NET Core website and our Blazor backend, and also do all the different Blazor WebAssembly optimizations that we need. So this will take a few more minutes. So let's head back to Super Mario 2. All right, so it looks like our backend has been deployed. Let's check out our hub has also been deployed. We come back over here, hit refresh. Sure enough, we now have our Listen Together database over here, and we also have our web apps over here too. There's our hub and there is our app. So let's go ahead and click on that, and this will then bring up our URL for our application because this is the web app service here. So let's go ahead and wait for that to pop up over here in a second. Should pop up. Oh, there it is. Perfect. There's a URL. Your name dash podcast web app. And there's our ASP.NET Core Razor app right there with some of the most featured stuff going on here, all the apps. I can then go to sign in. This is going to the same URL, and sure enough, there's all our podcasts. Now, we are missing an image here, so that's a little bit uh, weird, so we'll get that fixed up. But yeah, you have a full podcast app. You got dark mode, you got uh, subscriptions over here. We can add one, we can listen to one, we can do all the things that we want to do, which is super cool. And you just did it all in like 10, 15 minutes or so, which is rad. Now, what's also cool is that you can now come over into the podcast apps repo. Now that you have all the URLs, you can then configure your mobile and desktop app. So in the mobile app for .NET MAUI, um, there's actually this constants um, or, or this uh, config CS file here. And all you have to do is just simply put in your base URLs down here. That's it. That's it. Just put that in there instead of localhost. Put in the new backend with the ports that you need or actually no ports because it'll just be online. And you just put in those U URIs. And then you have an amazing mobile application for iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. And you're done. There you go. We've just literally created our O.NET podcast app for web, for mobile, for desktop, for all the things, which is super cool. We didn't have to write any code. We just set a few configuration flags and we're done. If you run into any issues, post them over on the GitHub or have questions about the architecture, post it over there too. And if you want one of these sweet monkey t-shirts or monkey hats or monkey artwork or so much more, I've launched a new merch shop over on Spreadshop. So go and check it out in the links below. I'll put it there. I'll say merch, monkey merch, and just go ahead and check that out if you want to support the channel even more, or just hit that subscribe button, that like button, do all the things that I always tell you to do. I'd super appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, and let me know if you have any questions at all. Cheers.